Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Freebloon again, and I am back with part two of Escape from Mr. Levincello's Library. So if you remember from part one, we were introduced to our main character, Kyle Keeley, and Kyle likes to play games, video games and board games, and he's also a little competitive. So we'll have to see if that helps him in the story. And we met a, heard a little bit about Mr. Lemoncello's new library. So in their town in Ohio, the library was closed down 12 years ago. So most of the kids in the book are 12 years old, so they have never experienced a public library. So there is a big competition to see who can have the first chance to spend time in the school's, the town's new public library. So I hope you enjoy part two. Chapter four. So exactly what kind of games are we talking about? I don't know, said Akimi. Fun book stuff, I guess. And do you think the new library will have equally new computers? Definitely. Wi-Fi? Probably. Kyle nodded slowly. And this takes place Friday night? Yeah. Akimi, I think you just discovered a way for me to shorten my most recent grounding. Your what? My game-deprived parental punishment. Kyle figured being locked in the library with computer on a Friday would be better than being stuck at home with no gaming gear at all. Can I borrow a pen and a sheet of paper? What? You're going to write an essay now on the bus? Better late than never. But it's due in homeroom, Kyle, first thing. Fine, I'll keep it brief. Akimi shook her head and handed Kyle a notebook and a pen. The bus bounced over a speed bump into the school driveway. He would need to make his essay really, really short. He was hoping the 12 winners would be randomly pulled out of a hat or something like that, like a lottery people on TV commercials always talk about. You just had to be, be in it to win it. Meanwhile, in another part of town, Charles Chillington was sitting in his father's library working with a college student who he hired to help him polish up his extra credit essay. He was dressed in his typical school uniform, khaki pants, blue blazer, button down shirt, and a tastefully striped tie. He was the only student at Alexanderville Middle School who dressed that way. What's a big word for library? Charles asked his teacher. Teachers love big words. Book repository, she said. Bigger. Um, Anthonium? Perfect. It's such a weird word, they're going to have to look it up. Charles made the change, saved the file, and sent the document off to the printer. Your dad sure reads a lot, his tutor said, admiring all the books in the library. Knowledge is power, said Charles. It's one of our fundamental family philosophies. Another one was, we eat losers for breakfast. Kyle and Akimi climbed off the bus and headed into the school. You know, Akimi said, my dad told me the library people had like a bazillion different architects drawing images and blueprints that they weren't allowed to share with each other. How come? To keep everything super secret. My dad and his firm did the front door and that was it. The second they stepped into Miss Cameron's classroom for homeroom, Miguel Fernandez shouted, Hey, Kyle, check it out! He held up a clear plastic binder, maybe two inches thick. I totally aced my essay. The library deal? Yeah, I put in pictures and charts, plus a whole section about the ancient library of Alexander, Egypt, since this is Alexandraville, Ohio. Cool, said Kyle. Miguel was super enthusiastic about everything. He was also the president of the School Library Aid Society. Hey Kyle, you know what they say about libraries? Uh, no, not really. They have something for every chapter of your life. Kyle groaned and the bell rang. All right, everyone, said Mrs. Dana Cameron, Kyle's homeroom teacher. Time to turn your extra credit essays. She started walking up and down the aisles. The judges will be meeting in the faculty lounge this morning to make a cut. Crap, thought Kyle. There's judges? This is not going to be a bingo ball drawing at the Laka Lottery. Mr. Keeley, did you write your essay? Sorta. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Either you wrote an essay or you didn't. Kyle half heartedly handed in his hastily scribbled sheet of paper. And unfortunately, Mrs. Cameron read it out loud. Balloons? There might be balloons, she read. The classroom erupted with laughter. Until Mrs. Cameron did that tilt with down her glasses and glare over them. Everyone got into silence. Is this your essay, Kyle? Yes, ma'am. We were supposed to write while we're excited about the grand opening and while balloons are my favorite part. I see, said Mrs. Cameron. You know, Kyle, 
Your brother Curtis wrote excellent essays when he was in my class. Yes, Mrs. Cameron, mumbled Kyle. Mrs. Cameron sighed contently. Please give him my regards. Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Cameron moved on to the next desk. Miguel eagerly handed his thick booklet. Very well done, Miguel. Kyle heard an odd noise out in the parking lot, a puttering, clunking, and clanking. Oh my, said Mrs. Cameron. I wonder if that's him. She hurried to the window and pulled up the blinds. All the kids followed her. And then they saw it, out in the parking lot, a car that looked like a giant red boot on wheels and had a stripe of notched black boot sole for the bumper. Thick shoelaces crisscrossed their way up the windshield to the top of the 10 foot tall boot collar. It looks like the red boot from that game, said Miguel, Family Frenzy. Kyle nodded. Family Frenzy was Mr. Lemoncello's first and probably most famous game. The red boot was one of the red tokens that you could pick and move around the board. A tall, gangly man stepped out of the car. It's Mr. Lemoncello, said Kyle. What is he doing here? It was just announced, said Mrs. Cameron. This evening, Mr. Luigi Lemoncello himself will be the final judge. Of what? Of your library essays. Eating lunch in the cafeteria, Kyle stared at his fish sticks, wishing he could pull a magic take another turn card out of thin air. I blew it, he said. Yep, you did, said Akimi. Can you imagine how awesome the new library is going to be if Mr. Lemoncello and his imagination factory had anything to do with it? Yeah, I can. And I'm kind of hoping I get to see it. After all, I wrote a real essay. Not one sentence about balloons. Thanks. Rub it in, why don't you? Akimi eased up a little. Hey, Kyle, when you're playing a game like Sorry and you get bumped back three spaces, do you quit? No. If I get bumped, I play harder because I know I need to find a way to get back those three places and pull ahead. Hey, guys, said Miguel. He was being followed by a kid with spiky hair and glasses. You two know Andrew Peckelman, right? Hi, said Kyle and Akimi. Hello. Andrew is one of my library aides, said Miguel. Cool, said Akimi. Miss Youngins, the librarian, just confirmed that Mr. Lemoncello is the top secret benefactor who donated all the money for the new library. Five hundred million dollars. She heard it on NPR, said, said Peckerman, who more or less talked through his nose. We did some primary re source research on Mr. Lemoncello and his connection to Alexanderville. What'd you find out, said Kyle. First off, said Miguel, he was born here. He had nine brothers and sisters, said Andrew. All of them crammed into one tiny apartment with only one bathroom over in Little Italy, said Miguel. And, said Peckelman, sounding like he wanted to one-up Miguel. He loved the old public library down on Market Street. He used to go there when he was a kid and he had a quiet place to think and doodle his ideas. And get this, said Miguel, Mrs. Tobin, the librarian back then, took an interest in little Luigi, even though he was just, you know, a kid. She kept the library open late some nights and let him borrow junk from her desk or her purse, thimbles and thumbtacks and glue bottles, even red Barbie doll boots, stuff he used to make games with. Andrew then jumped in. Then Mrs. Tobin took Mr. Lemontel's sketch for family frenzy home to her husband who ran a print shop. They signed some papers, created a company, and within a couple of years, they were all millionaires. But Miguel had the last word. And now, of course, Mr. Lemoncello is a bazillionaire. What are you nerds so excited about? Said Haley Daly, who walked over with a whole bunch of popular girls. We're pumped about Mr. Lemoncello, said Miguel. And the new library, said Andrew. And, said Kyle melodramically, seeing you, Haley. You are so immature. Come on, girls. Haley and her friends bounced away to the cool kids' table. Check it out, said Akimi, pointing to the cafeteria line where Charles Chillington was balancing two trays, one for him and one for Mrs. Cameron. I'm so glad you have lunch duty today, Mrs. Cameron, Kyle heard Chillington say. If you don't mind, I have a few questions about how com conventions within genres such as poetry, drama, or essays can affect meaning. Well, Charles, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. Thank you, Mrs. Cameron. And may I say, your sweater compliments your eye color. What a suck up, mumbled Akimi, 
Chillington's trying to use his Weasley charm to make sure Mrs. C sends his essay to Mr. Lemoncello. Don't worry, said Kyle. Mrs. Cameron isn't the final judge. Mr. Lemoncello is. And since he's a genius, he will definitely pick up on the essays you guys all wrote. Undoubtedly, said Peckleman. Thanks, Kyle, said Miguel. I just wish you were coming with us, said Akimi. Well, maybe I can. Like you said, this is a move back three spaces card. I take a walk on the boardwalk and someone else owns it. It's a shoot in Shoots and Ladders, a detour in the Molasses Swamp in Candyland. Yo, Kyle, how many games have you played? Enough to know that you don't quit until somebody actually wins. He picked up his lunch and headed to the dirty tray window. Akimi called after him. Where are you going? I have the rest of lunch and study hall to work on a new essay. But Mrs. Cameron says she won't take it. Maybe but I have to roll the dice one more time. Maybe I'll get lucky. I hope so, said Akimi. Me too. See you later on the bus. Chapter six. Working on his library essay, like he had never worked on any essay before his whole life, Kyle crafted a killer thesis statement that compared libraries to his favorite games. Using a library can make learning about anything fun, he wrote. When you're in a library researching a topic, you're on a scavenger hunt looking for clues and prizes and books instead of in your attic and backyard. He put in points and subpoints. He wrapped everything up with a tiny conclusion. He even checked his spelling. Twice. But Akimi had been right. I'm sorry, Kyle, Mrs. Cameron said. This is a very good, and I'm impressed with your extra effort. However, the deadline was this morning. Rules are rules. The same is the same for all the board games you mentioned. She basically handed a Kyle go back 500 spaces card but Kyle refused to give up. He remembered how his mother had written to Mrs. Lemoncello's Imagination Factory when he and his brother needed a new fresh set of cars for the scavenger hunt game. Maybe he could send his essay directly to Mr. Lemoncello via email. Maybe if the game maker wasn't judging the essays until late that night, Kyle had a shot, a long shot. But hey, sometimes the long ones are the only shots you got. The second he hit home and sat down on his mother's kitchen computer, he attached his essay to a high priority email to Mr. Lemoncello at the Imagination Factory. What are you doing, Kyle? His mom asked when she saw him typing on the computer. Some extra credit homework. Extra credit? But school's over at the end of the week. So? You're not playing my dinner dash game, are you? No, mom. It's an essay about Mr. Lemoncello's amazing new library downtown. Sounds interesting. I heard on the radio that there's going to be a grand opening reception on Friday night at the Parker House Hotel, right across the street from the old bank building. I mean, the new library. Kyle typed a PS to his email. I hope the party on Friday has balloons. He's all about the balloons. He hit send. Who did you send your essay to, your teacher? Nope, I sent it to Mr. Lemoncello himself. It might take some digging, but I found an email on the company's website. Really, I'm impressed, his mom said. You know, this morning I said to your dad, Kyle can be just as smart as Curtis and just as focused as Mike when he puts his mind to it. Thanks, Mom, Kyle said, but his smile quickly disappeared when there was a bong from Mr. Lemoncello, said the email. Dear Lemoncello, game lover, this is a no reply mailbox. Your message did not go through. Do not try to resend it or you'll hear another bong and thanks for playing our games. One more chapter, guys. Chapter seven. Heading back to school on Tuesday, Kyle knew he had to put on a brave face. He smiled as he walked with his class, with his class to the auditorium for the special assembly, the one where Mr. Luigi Lemoncello himself would announce the winners of the library lock-in essay contest. I hope he picked yours, Kyle said to Akimi. Thanks, I do too, but it won't be the same without you. Well, when it's over, the library will be officially open and you can take me on a tour. That's exactly what I'm gonna do, if I win. If you don't, I will send a flaming squirrel after Mrs. Cameron. For this assembly, the seventh graders, most of whom were 12 years old, were told to sit in the front row, close to the stage. This made Kyle feel a little better. At least he didn't get to see Mr. Lemoncello up close and personal. But his hero wasn't even on stage. It was just the principal, the school librarian, Miss Youngahans, and a red-headed woman in high heel shoes who Kyle didn't recognize. She sat up straight, like someone had slipped a yardstick down her back of her bright red business suit. 
Her glasses were bright red, too. That's Dr. Zinchenko, said Miguel, sitting on the edge of his seat. Who's she? asked Akimi. Just the most famous librarian in the whole wide world, he said. All right, boys and girls with the principal, settle down. Quiet, please. It is my great honor to introduce the head librarian for the new Alexanderville Public Library, Dr. Zinchenko. Everyone clapped, and the tall lady in the red outfit strode over to the microphone. Good morning, she said. Her voice was breathy, with just a hint of Russian accent. Twelve years ago, this town lost its one and only public library when it was torn down to make room for a parking garage. Back then, many said the internet had rendered libraries obsolete, that a new parking garage would attract shoppers to the boutiques and dress shops in the old building. The library's demolition was meant that those of you who are now 12 lived your entire life without a public library. She looked down at the front row. This is why, to kick off a summer reading program, the 12-year-olds will be selected to be the very first to explore the wonders of the new library. We have permission slips for you to take home. You will need a sleeping bag, a toothbrush, and if you please, a change of clothes. She smiled mysteriously. You might consider packing two pairs of underwear. Okay, said Kyle, this is bizarre. Did the librarian really think that seventh graders weren't toilet trained? There will be movies, food, fun, games, and prizes. Also, each of our 12 winners will receive a $500 gift card toward games and other purchases of Lemoncello products. Oh man, 500 bucks worth of free games? Kyle sank a little lower in his seat. The next time someone tells him to do an extra credit assignment, he's gonna turn it in early. And now, here to announce our winners, the man behind the new library, the master gamester himself, Mr. Luigi Lemoncello. Dr. Zinchenko gestured. The whole auditorium swung their heads. People were clapping and whistling and cheering, but no one came on stage. The audience petered out. And then, on the opposite side of the stage, Kyle heard a very peculiar sound. It was a cross between a burp and a squeak from a squeaky toy. Check back later to see what happens.